Well, I'm finally going to repack the cylinder on the link belt. It's been leaking ever since I got it, and might have a couple projects coming up, so it needed to be fixed. I just it was never a bad enough leak for me to worry about. But you know, if you start something, it'll uh, blow out. So me and Zacky Poo here, ain't that right, Zach? Yes, sir. We're going to try to pull this thing off today, this afternoon. So first thing I'm going to do is take this grease fitting off, and then I got to take these bolts out and undo all these lines there and up top and the grease line and take that coupler off and what I'll do I'll tie it up to tobacco uh, and drive that pin out it's the same pin that goes all the way through so I'll just have to keep wiggling this cylinder over here and I mean it don't have to be knocked out much about six inches and uh, I'll tie that off to the back coat so it can't fall down. Then I'll let it down and get some pressure off of it. And this should, uh, this pin right here should wiggle itself on out. I should be able to wiggle it on out. So I took my grease line off, took my fitting off down there, and the locking coupler, which is pretty much just a about a three quarter inch thick by an inch and a half washer with a hole in it that the bolt goes through. Just a little collar to lock that in. But um, the pin's got a little more pressure on than I thought it would. I figured it would have leaked down tonight and kind of leaked off. You can go ahead and start it up. And I uh, figured it would have took most of the pressure off and I can't, still doesn't have enough pressure off where I can tap that. Alright, so we found the sweet spot and got the uh, pressure taken off of it. And now I've got a strap wrapped around it, a choker strap, and then around the back coat. Big aerial here. And uh, I think I can just pull that cylinder off now. Push on that cylinder, you'll be fine right there. It should slide right off. There ain't a whole lot. If it's, if it's too much, I'll knock it off a little bit. So we got it laid down and now I'm gonna take these lines off so I don't have I don't have to take these steel lines I don't have to take them um, to the hydraulic shop to get repaired because they're liable to roll around get bent or broke or something so I'm taking these off and this is usually when it gets interesting because if you notice the machine was running and these have pressure on them and there's no pressure relief that I know of on this thing so it can tend to sometimes spray usually when I take this last bolt out why are you backing up Zach? <laughs> I ain't trying to get and sprayed. there's the rags on my side don't you? <laughs> um, got about 5,000 psi pressure let this thing run. and I have been drenched before so we're gonna do this safely here somewhat kind of nervous I don't leave no hydraulic fluid in my eyes let's do a little bit of safety here you 
that one's tight now. I know some people are going to laugh at me, but I have taken some damn oil baths before from doing this. Alright, good. No pressure on it. We would have gotten sprayed by now. Yep. Been stuck. there, done that. Well, that's good news. I don't have to worry about getting sprayed anymore. Um, get me a catch can. Well, we'll figure out where that's going to run. This cylinder holds about two or three gallons, I think. And it is all about to come out. Uh, I did this one time. Oh, it's come, about to come out real good now. I did this on the six cylinder of the we had a day woo and I was up there straddling the boom and I took that damn it was curled up and the cylinder was all the way out all right we knocked that pin out fired the machine up and retracted the cylinder all the way back in well that's the first time I'd ever done that so guess what happened when I uh, I had the pin out and I was up there straddling the boom taking this hose off and when I took that fourth bolt out it damn all the pressure was released and that rod comes shooting out and it just shot flew it filled my damn coat pockets up I kid you not I had a Carhartt it was winter time I had a Carhartt jacket on I could take it and dump fluid out of my pockets it was that damn bad so alright that one's off now we got to remove this one up here. So I shouldn't have any problem with uh, pressure on it now since the end is technically open. And I got some bungee cords and what I'll do because it'll sit here and drain the hydraulic tank with these lines because they're lower than the hydraulic tank so I got me a bungee cord and what I'll do is bungee cord this whole assembly up so that it'll be because it's just gravity fed now that the machine's off you cut the machine on you'll have old paint pull over here uh, I need a tub to put these in. I'll set them out here for now. Something to keep them separate. No, we're gonna be prying right here. I'll set them right here for now. Um, take this line off, like I said. I'm sure that doesn't have pressure. It seems like it's trying to lift up a little bit. Really don't want to move. Spray to the face today. I'm gonna have to zoom through this. We're gonna have a 20 minute video of me taking this down. I'm bold out. Laugh at Harbor Freight. This Harbor Freight uh, tool here. Love me. Harbor Freight. Oh, and a little weight to it. I don't know if a bungee cord is going to hold all that up. Let me, uh... Alright, well, I'm going to bungee cord this up to the boom so it doesn't... It's out of the way and doesn't keep leaking. Surprisingly, it's not leaking, so it must have a, a valve in it. I know my the Volvo, they'll just keep pouring and pouring and pouring, so... That's one nice thing. Alright.